Today, we're looking at a blue ink from Diatromensis, Charles Dickens, Jeans Blue. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. As always, there's timestamps down below in the description, so if you're in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I would appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram, and if you're new here and like fountain pen ink reviews, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this cross bailey with a medium nib. I wrote with it for a day and then used it to take the notes for this video. I standardized my first writing sample by using Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper on all of the tests that I do. I do use other papers and some of those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form so it comes in a vial like this. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is slightly lighter than the, st uh, than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does offer some shading spots, like the starts lighter and gets darker. Fox is darker on the bottom, goes to mid-tone, goes to dark. The starts lighter and gets darker, 13 seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some spots of shading, like fox starts lighter, gets darker, brown starts darker, gets lighter, the K in quick is very dark, and 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, far left to far right, do show us plenty of color variation, and we do get it. How about them Tomoe Rivers? No bleeding, less Tomoe River ghosting than normal. The 1.1, very dark, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine, a lot lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 17 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, but not as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 28 seconds to dry. The scrubbies for both show us no color variation, and we didn't get any. And Rhodia, no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1, no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some nice shading spots. Quick starts darker, gets lighter, and gets darker. Brown starts dark and gets light. Lazy starts dark and gets light. Over starts light and gets dark, 14 seconds to dry. Medium is slightly darker than the extra fine, not nearly as dark as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, and still some nice shading, like fox. The top of the F is lighter than the bottom of the F, and then it stays light to the O, where it gets very dark. Brown starts very dark until about in the W, it gets lighter, and then very dark at the N again. Over starts a little lighter, and then goes very dark. 22 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both, far left, far right, do show some color variation, and we do get some color variation in the writing. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this light blue that pushes its way up, but at the top, we see a very dark, almost forest green kind of green. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And we see a definite blue line on the bottom. The green that's at the top, much more pronounced because not as much of that blue has moved its way up. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I go straight to the lowercase h that for some reason everything else there was perfect, but the lowercase h blew out, which then makes me say no, I wouldn't use it as a note taker. Now water is lifting most of the tones up off that paper, but it's leaving a lot of the blue down below, which makes me say maybe water's not enough. Pen flush is reactivating and lifting it up off the paper. It's only 30 seconds of it being right there. It's not being pushed through a pen, I do believe, because I see some of the white of the paper coming through, that pen flush is all that you would need to get this out of your pen. 
The one-third bleach solution does completely remove it from the paper and it does leave a slight bit of discoloration on the paper, even though I don't think you would need the one-third bleach. I test viscosity or flow with a tilt test that I'll link down below in a description or in a card. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diatramentus Jeans Blue has a viscosity of 2.22, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples. And for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diatramentus Jeans Blue has an average dry time of 19 seconds, making it again normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Diatramentus Jeans Blue, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice orange and chose Krishna's Goldfish. The second writing sample is going to be done on Yellow Rhodia, Apica, CD, and Life Paper. Here we're looking at the Yellow Rhodia paper to see what kind of tone change we may get for having that yellow paper. Because while this is certainly a blue, it was the green that really made me start to think about the tones that could we really emphasize that green here. And on the yellow paper, yes. Look at the medium. That's an entirely different color. That is a definite, definite turquoise green right there compared to this much more blue. It even alters the color in the scrubby. So once again, watch out in your professional environments if you write on yellow paper. Life paper, no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 11 seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 13 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation because there was none in the writing. Last up is Apica. No bleeding, no ghosting. This is the Apica CD Notebooks. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Now the extra fine is a lot lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and it does offer some shading. Look at how the K in quick is much darker than the rest of the word. T in the is lighter than the word. Brown starts dark and gets light. Fox starts light and gets dark. The is a very dark word. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub. Medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine does show some color variation, although more of it comes out in the writing. The medium shows none, and we got none, and that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Diatramensis Charles Dickens Jeans Blue? I think it's a slight bit turquoise leaning. And something strange that I experienced with this ink is the color that came out of the pen seemed to change over the course of a week. When I went back later and wrote with it a second time, it seems like the ink ages some inside the pen, which I can't really explain other than maybe it's oxidizing or something. I don't know. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? Well, I found it best to be with a good solid tone. The kind of solid tone you get from a broad, wet pen. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm going to remind you if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.